Thank you. Good morning. I feel like I should be presenting with a martini. I think it's a requirement when you're presenting on a bar. Um, it's uh, great to be here. Um, this is a really great event. It's really inspiring, and um, it seems like you guys have something really special going on here. Um, so this morning, I'm going to talk about the future of drones. As Kristen mentioned, it seems like every day we learn about something new about drones and how they um, have the potential to really impact and change the world for the better, um, delivering medicine to remote locations, to planting a billion trees. Um, equally, I think every day in the news we hear something bad about drones, um, from flying over government buildings, from near misses with, with airplanes, and um, you know, crashing on athletes um, and sending them to the hospital. So really today, um, the question that a group of frogs, that's what we call ourselves at Frog Design, a group of frogs and I started to ask ourselves, can drones really be the next big smart device? Can they become something as important as our smartphones are? Um, and will they become something that we interact with every single day? So we, when we started to uh, approach the question of can they be the next big smart device, we discovered two clues that pointed towards, yes, there's a possibility that they will be part of our everyday lives in the future. One is the fact that we are entering a post-smartphone era, and we're, in, we're part of that process is happening now. Um, this is obvious with these new types of technologies that are trying to take our attention away from smartphones, um, such as wearables. I think there's a delay. Oh, wearables. Um, and um, so Apple just released the Apple Watch this year. And Fitbit is also very popular. These are two types of devices, wearable devices, that are taking our attention away from smartphones. Additionally, we have augmented reality. So Google Glass in the past year or two just released, um, or Google just released Google Glasses, which are augmented glasses that display information on the built world. Um, and this is just one step closer to augmented contact lenses. This is, again, something else that's trying to take our attention away from smartphones. Projection technology is advancing, so things like holographs and virtual reality. Uh, these technologies are also um, trying to compete with the smartphone and potentially one day might be the device or the technology that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So this gets back to drones, which is kind of a weird technology to include in this list. Um, but can drones become an important everyday device, um, just like smartphones? And this leads to clue number two. So drones are already evolving from smartphones. They are essentially built on the same technology as smartphones, from the gyroscopes to the accelerometers that are in them, the GPS, the micro, uh, microchips, the microprocessors. Uh, a U.S. senator recently called drones flying smartphones, and he's not too far off from that statement. But what I find more interesting about the comparison between drones and smartphones is um, it's less interesting about the technology similarities. What's more interesting is the behavioral similarities between smartphones and drones. So just like smartphones are capturing political unrest, we saw that with Twitter in Egypt, Drones were capturing political unrest in Hong Kong this past year, so kind of using drones as a platform to capture the, uh, the magnitude of the event that smartphones might not have been able to, and then communicating that to the masses. So just like we have selfies with uh, smartphones, drones are taking self-obsession to a, an entirely new height with Dronies, so dronies are essentially, is a selfie taken with a drone. So you don't need those smartphone, or uh, selfie sticks anymore, so you can throw those away. You just grab a drone instead. 
What's also interesting is we're seeing drones with application platforms, much like smartphones. This is the Autonomous Wandering Interface. It's a project that was created uh, at Cornell University. And it's a interface that is projected from a drone on any surface. So it kind of, it's a contextual application platform that follows its user and uh, projects the interface onto the environment around them. And just how uh, smartphones are changing and evolving their, their form factor from um, rectangles that live in our pockets to rectangles that live on our uh, wrists, drones are also starting to do that already. Um, this is a project called Nixie. It is a, um, a wearable drone, and it recently won the Intel Innovation Award, a $500,000 competition. And with that money, they plan to take this device to market. So now we're seeing drones that are changing form factors and interacting with our bodies in different ways. So there's two clues that are pointing towards drones as possibly being part of our everyday lives in the future. One is the fact that we're entering a post-smartphone era and that there's various technologies that are trying to compete for our attention. And the second is the fact that drones themselves are starting to evolve from smartphones and behave like smartphones. So if drones do become part of our everyday lives in the future, what will they be like? And when will they be here? Uh, so the team of Frogs and I at, um, at Frog, we thought that 2030 sounded about right that if they do become part of our everyday lives, the technology will be advanced enough by 2030 to, um, for people to accept them. Here are some team members, and then the rest are listed below. Um, so we started to ask ourselves, what will these drones have to be like in 2030? What characteristics, what will they look like, how they behave, how they integrate into society? So we came up with two characteristics that we felt like in order for people to accept drones as an everyday device, they would have to be, they'd have to be able to perform physical tasks. So what captivates us about drones today is kind of their, what will be their differentiator in the future as well, is the fact that drones can move through physical space and they can interact with the environment um, in ways that smartphones obviously can't. The second is that we feel like they'll have to be wearable. There's, um, we won't be interacting with drones all the time. We won't want to be interacting with drones all the time, just like our smartphones. Like, we often keep our smartphones in our pockets. They're, they live somewhere, um, they're kind of docked on our body and they go with us, but we're not always interacting with them. So we obviously don't want drones constantly flying around us. We only want to use them when we need them. So they'll have to somehow be with us, but also be able to be turned off and, and dock on our bodies. So with these two characteristics, um, the first being that they have to perform physical tasks, the second that they need to be wearable, um, our group quickly sketched out over 15 concepts, and some of them are kind of strange and far out there, from a, a wearable dog collar to a, uh, a wearable drone that can fix your makeup and do your hair for you when you're not looking so great. We ultimately down-selected to four that we felt like represented the concept the most. And the first concept is titled Flare. So Flare is a wearable drone. It's uh, worn on the wrist. There's a wristband, and the drone is a disc-like uh, form factor with a small screen on it. And um, it's essentially, its functionality is to act as a tour guide in a city. So um, a user, instead of pulling out their phone to look at Google Maps and type in the search, can just pull the drone to their, to their face and say, take me to the nearest coffee shop with a quick gesture and launch it off their hand and it'll fly a few meters in front of them and direct them to the nearest coffee shop. So they'll follow the drone through the city until they get to the destination and the drone will actually stop at the coffee shop. 
the next drone is breathe. So this idea came around that we thought in 2030 there might be more air pollution in cities. We hope not. Um, hopefully that gets solved by then. Um, but um, in cities that do have lots of air pollution, we thought a wearable drone could be potentially a good device to combat that. So Breathe is a wearable drone that lives on the user's shoulder, kind of like a little friend, um, and it's constantly monitoring the air quality around this person. So if it detects that the air quality is bad, it'll pop off the user's shoulder, fly in front of their face, and filter the bad air and supply fresh air to the user. The third concept is called parasol. So this one, um, the designer that created this one, she wanted it to be more like a piece of jewelry that could be worn on a necklace or attached to a belt. Um, and this one is to combat the weather elements. So if it's raining or snowing or um, if you're a redhead and it's very sunny out, um, you can simply detach the drone from the necklace or the belt, throw it in the air, and it'll protect the user from the rain or the sun. And the final concept that we sketched out a little further was called Scout. So this one is to keep people more physically active in their environment, in their day-to-day -day lives. So it's a drone that can attach to a backpack, attach to a belt, attach to a shirt, um, and simply throwing it in the air can launch a series of interactive physical games. So this one is equipped with a projector, and one of those games is a rock climbing game, so it um, can project a path on a rock wall, and the user can climb the wall and try to follow that path. It'll also record the user's um, history and try to encourage them to break their previous records. So we did this exercise and we quickly realized that these four concepts are interesting and great um, and very thought provoking, but there was a key component that we weren't accounting for is that drones need to integrate into society. So the concepts that we are covering really lived in the drone plus body category, but it's a new type of device that I think designers need to put on their architect hat a little bit because there's interactions that are that we're not necessarily used to as as designers um, as screen-based designers um, and so we have to think about what are the spatial interactions that these devices are going to go through so one thing to consider about drones in the future is that drones will be interacting with other drones so how do we design for that drones will be traveling long distances potentially and be out of reach or out of view of their owners. So how do we design for drones that are kind of on their own and going on their own little journeys without their user oversight? And then, again, drones will have to identify objects in the built world. They'll have to identify buildings. They'll have to identify trees so that it, they don't run into these objects. And they'll have to identify our bodies so that they can quickly undock and dock and know who we are and who their owner is. They'll also have to identify people um, that aren't the owner of the, of the drone. Um, they'll have to potentially identify faces so that they know if they're delivering to a certain person. If, if the drone's task is to deliver an object to a certain person, that they identify that person. And then lastly, what I think is very important to consider about drones is their emotional connection, their ability to kind of break through the scary stereotypes that drones have. Um, this idea of these blades over our heads isn't really something natural. So how do you break past those, those fears and relate to, uh, to users on a more emotional level? So based on this, um, our team developed a series of drone experience principles. And these are true for wearable drones or any type of drones. But in the future, we think that drones will have delightful personalities. They'll have to connect with us on a very personal level. Um, there's several drones right now that I think are doing a good job at this. There's one called Lily. I think the fact that it has a human name is already trying to accomplish that um, delightful connection. Um, additionally, Lily comes with a face. It's an LED screen that it can smile and frown. and um, 
Another drone that I like is called Speary. It takes on a very soft form factor. It's a light blue, and it has kind of this friendly insect-like appearance. So next, I think drones will clearly have to signal their intention, and this is to break through that fear that most people will probably feel uh, around drones. So this idea that a drone is approaching you and the intention is known that it's approaching you to deliver you a package or it's approaching you to deliver you a message or to pick something up rather than it's approaching you to kill you. So, <laughs> so it's important that those approaches and those interactions with drones are clearly communicated. And some of the techniques to do that are that could be form factor, visual cues, um, color choices, motion, um, audio cues. And next, so drones will need to tether to their owners, and this doesn't necessarily mean physically. I think um, in the US there's an issue right now of drones flying where they're not supposed to be and not being able to identify who their owners are. So there's going to be um, a need to assign a user to a drone and clearly be able to identify who owns that drone. So just much like we in the US register our vehicles, um, we'll probably have to register our drones as well. And drone infrastructure will be built. So if it's part of our everyday lives, like all technologies, there's infrastructure that's built into the environment to accommodate these new technologies. So much like we have cell phone towers so that we can stay connected with our cell phones, um, and much like we have uh, running water and pipes, these um, drone infrastructure will also need to be established. So here, this is just a sketch of a charging station. So if drones in the future do need to travel far distances, perhaps we have charging stations that are set up around the environment, just like kind of like gas stations, um, where if they're lo running low on gas or energy, they can quickly charge up and go on their journey. So drone highways and flight patterns will be established in the future. So if there are thousands of drones flying in the sky, there's gonna need to be some kind of structure and order established to keep, um, to keep them um, from crashing into each other and from having uh, the sky above us be extremely chaotic. So we have flight patterns that are established for airplanes. Um, we have highways that are established for cars. So it'll be very similar with, with drones. Drones will have to help each other. So there might be a, 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 a rule where that they're constantly communicating with each other and they can detect if one of their neighboring drones is malfunctioning and sweep in and rescue it. So there, there may be a law that requires drones to help out other drones. And lastly, this one's probably one of the most important uh, experience principles for humans to accept drones as an everyday device is that they have to be completely safe. And right now they're not. Um, they will likely be equipped with safety technology such as airbags or parachutes. Um, and this is just a way that we have to, in order for drones to become part of our everyday lives, they really need to eliminate that fear factor that they currently have. And one way of doing that is making sure that they're equipped with safety technology. So moving forward, so drones are potentially going to be an everyday device. Um, they are built off of smartphone technology. They are behaving like smartphones. They are taking form factors and um, new, they are establishing new interaction patterns so that we accept them into our everyday lives. So moving forward, I think we can definitely anticipate that there will be more airborne technologies um, in the sky. And as designers, as thinkers, as city planners, we'll have to make sure that we um, design drones to be good. So we steer them towards the, 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 the good concepts and the good ideas more and try to divert them away from the bad. Thank you.